Hello and welcome. My name's Campbell. This is Autodidactic Channel. Thank you for joining me. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And more and more, we're understanding that we have to be self-educated. Otherwise, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And so today, again, we're going to look into the story that we've been given. And I wanted to have a look at Rosalind Chapel today. And we're going to have a look at, you know, a little bit of the history, but that's not actually what I want to get into. There's a bit of a mystery inside this chapel. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. This is uh, RosalindChapel.com, the official page. And as you can see here, Rosalind Chapel 1446. And here we have, this is obviously an artist's rendition. Got the chapel up here, sitting up high on this foundation. And of course, the ruins of something uh, pretty big down here as well. So interesting. So just quickly, the art history. Rosalind Chapel has enjoyed a rich and sometimes turbulent history. Founded in 1446 as a family chapel, the building was incomplete when the founder, Sir William St. Clair, died in 1484. His son, Sir Oliver St. Clair, roofed the choir with its stone vault, but did not complete his father's original design. Following the Reformation, the chapel fell into disrepair, and in 1650, Cromwell's troops attacked Roslyn Castle and stabled their horses inside the chapel. Uh, following a period of Victorian repair and restoration, the chapel was rededicated in 1862 and weekly services began again. A report in 1954 highlighted the poor condition of the stonework and the thinking at the time was to cover the historic stonework with cementuous slurry. So they covered it in slurry. Um, so Paul Cook might be interested in that bit of information. Um, a further report in 1995 confirmed that damage was occurring and that humidity to the chapel was very high, blah, 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 probably because they covered it in um, cementitious, cementitious slurry. Uh, so there you go. Like This is the official site, the official site of Rosalind Chapel, and that's it. That's the history for a famous chapel that is, you know, six almost 600 years old right um 550 years old uh they don't they just sort of a few names they don't you know nothing about again you know nothing about how it was built or anything like that so that is rosalind chapel so what i want to have a look at now is something that's inside rosalind chapel and there are these cubes and they are on the ceiling inside the chapel and it says here Rosalind Chapel and the Mystery of the Cubes. Rosalind Chapel. The place is located a few dozen kilometres from Edinburgh, which is the cultural capital of Scotland. It's in a village of no particular interest, and Celtic sacred inscriptions have been found nearby, and Rosalind is part of a druidic complex dedicated to Saturn, the ultimate stage of Celtic initiation. Well, there you go. That's a bit different to what I thought the chapel was. A bit different to the story we just read, right? The Rosalind Chapel Cubes. In 2003, uh, this is by Stuart Mitchell. In 2003, my father, TJ Mitchell, introduced me to one of the wonders of science and musical architecture, Rosalind Chapel, which was eight miles from where he lived. And he writes, I may have been fortunate in the fact that I live close by to the chapel and it made it easy for me to access and research its many wonders. But it was a musical mystery and its connection to a source of geometry, as defined by nature, that really caught my attention. The Lady Choir section of the chapel is covered by 215 cubes and rectangles protruding on stems from 14 arches that crisscross one another and carved into each cube are 13 geometric patterns 
that are repeated throughout the entire 215 cubes sequentially. The patterns are only found collectively within one, one known science, and that is cymatics or Chladni patterns. These are produced very easily by laws of resonance and vibration by the use of some very basic materials which were readily available in medieval times. And here we have some pictures of the cubes. And we all know what cymatics are, right? Cymatics. Uh, cymatics is, is the signature of music. Cymatics is literally looking at music. It's the, uh, the geometric expression or the physical expression of a musical frequency. That is a cymatic. So this chapel has cymatics encoded into it, like drawn um, on these cubes across the ceiling in a certain part of the chapel. And so what happened? Well, this, this guy, uh, what was his name? Stuart Mitchell, his dad basically took him in and, they, and his dad told him there's a mystery here. And it took them, I think it was 23 years to crack it. And what they found out is it was cymatic patterns okay we've all seen the cymatics and we've also you know it's very linked to you know the uh, dr Amoto stuff but cymatics are certain frequencies so what did they do they wrote the frequencies down and guess what they were they were notes you know frequencies are notes it's a song it's a tune it's a harmonic so the question is do all cathedrals have this do they all have their own tone their own sound that we can find. Because there is a lady who, because there is a lady who goes into chapels and cathedrals and records the silence. And um, she actually comes out with a sound. She's got a, a you know, a, a, um, a certain way that she does it. She records it seven times, but I will have a listen to that in a minute. But first of all, let's have a listen to the sound of Rosalind Chapel Cubes and the, the song that is encoded within this building. And here we are on tanyaharris.com, and this is the architecture of sound. And here we have some pretty familiar, you know, kind of images to this little genre of research, you know, the old world architecture. And down here we have the floor plans. Now, I'm sure you've all seen these as well. We, we find these, you know, floor plans, they're everywhere when we're looking for, you know, 
designs and blueprints and construction stuff, um, we always come across these, uh, these, these floor plan layouts. Now, Tanya Harris is the lady who went into different cathedrals and she recorded the silence. And then she played the silence back and recorded that again and did that seven times to try and find out if there was a resonant frequency to these buildings. Now, you can see that, uh, you know, these are all cymatic patterns. So then what she did was she played the, what she got back into water and she started getting these cymatic patterns out. And, you know, we, we all know we've discussed the link between sound and, you know, shape, form, geometry, cymatics, this whole thing, you know, very, very often. And it says down here that Harris employed the architecture of Nicholas Hawksmoor as an instrument to explore the relationship between sound and geometry within form. To investigate this concept, she recorded the resonant frequency of four Hawksmoor churches inspired by a technique discovered by Alvin Lucia. Harris recorded the silence of each church and played this recording back into the church while recording and repeated this process until the resonant frequency of the church became audible. So there you go, and she then played that into the water, and that obviously gave her a, same, a, a cymatic shape, a pattern. These are the shapes that we see everywhere, right? Up here, the windows, you know, on the floors, like everywhere. In Rosalind Chapel that we just looked at, you know, that they're actually got squares. So the question is, is was this everywhere? 
Is this what the deal was? That these, as we've suspected, were machines, right? Not, not, not buildings for worship, but more machines built to a certain resonant frequency to give out a certain frequency, a good frequency, right? That, that heals and inspires people and, and gives us energy and may, makes us better rather than the stuff they're giving out now. You know, we know the whole uh, 432 to 440 hertz change, how they've done that from a nine to an eight, you know, from the God number to the loop. Uh, and now we have proof that these buildings actually, they actually exude, is that the right um, word? They give off a resonant frequency, which is a certain shape. And she's only done four churches so far. But imagine if we could link each church's frequency up to the shapes within it, because with those cubes in Ros Rosalind Chapel, this is, that's all the kind of stuff that, you know, that, that gets ripped out of churches, right? Like we don't know how much has been taken off, but also all the markings that, that are still there, we, you know, we should be looking, looking at them as cymatics. These are literally cymatic machines that they're, they're frequency generators. That's what they are. They're like big Rife machines, right? This is what a Rife machine is. It's a frequency generator. And uh, they were used for healing. And of course, Royal Raymond Rife was thrown in jail and wasn't allowed to sell his invention because it actually helped people. So that's what we're talking about, you know, a Rife machine on a massive scale that would give out frequencies to, you know, benefit, you know, the people in the, in the surrounding area. And um, as we heard, the, the music that they got out of Rosalind Chapel, they sung as a choir, right? Uh, so this is the thing. Chapels seem to be also designed to, to carry and hold that frequency, especially when sung by choirs and played by organs, right? And of course, on the top of Rosalind Chapel, there's bells. So we've got the bells. So now we have this, you know, we have our cathedrals, you know, the cathode rays um, with their spires on the tops. We have the choirs, the organs and the bells are all musical. We have all the cymatic shapes through them and the different you know, logos and things. And now we have um, evidence that they have a resonant frequency that probably, that well, that um, no doubt matches, um, you know, all the, all the cymatic shapes that we see all over these buildings. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that because, um, I mean, it's just really a bit more proof that we're on the right, right track, I think. So I guess what we need to do now, um, I'm going to have to do a bit more research into... Tanya Harris, I really just wanted to show the Rosalind Chapel, but I thought I'd you know, better build a bit of a story uh, for anyone new to the topic. It's just TanyaHarris.com, and she gets into all the different frequencies, that cymatics and sound and all these different things. And she's a bit of an artist as well. So there's a bit to read here. So go and check it out. And there's a few different you know, articles here. Consciousness resides in geometry. I mean, and... <laughs> We've all seen this shape before, right? I mean, and that is a cymatic pattern. That, that's lots of different waves being put out at the same time. And also very flower of lifey and you know, much other stuff. So there you go, guys. What do you think? I don't, I don't know if we can, but we should be all out recording the silence, I guess, trying to work out what the cymatic shapes of these buildings are. And then what happens when you play that tune back in that building? I wonder what, the, what happens then. Because I had a bit of a look, and I haven't—I don't know if those recordings of uh, the choir singing that code from, you know, the song from Rosalind Chapel. I don't know if that was done inside the chapel or not. But I mean, there's definitely got to be a correlation there, right? That's definitely got to be the music for the organ and the choir when when it's being used. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. <laughs> I feel like I should be saying more, but um, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'll do some more videos and follow this up. So. There you go, guys. Cymatics um, in motion, right? So architecture is solid sound. Okay, so these buildings, as well as emitting, you know, they're they the way because they're built and they're all different, slightly different. We've been talking about this, you know, they've all got the same features, but they're all different. That's so that because they're all built to a different frequency, they're all slightly different, right? They're all got their own resonant frequency, just like we do. So there you go, guys. Um, the music of the cathedrals, solid sound.
What do you think? Leave me a comment below and also give me a like. Give me a subscribe if you're not already subscribed, if you like this content and also share it around. Um, obviously, you know, help to get this kind of information out there. Beat the, the PooTube algorithm. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for everyone who supports me and this channel. And of course, you'll find all the links below. Go check out our t-shirt shop at Tartaria Australia. Some amazing stuff there, amazing artwork by Kelly. And of course, if you haven't already, go check out the Brisbane event if you are in that area for the 22nd weekend of the 22nd of October. We're going to be in Brisbane doing a live event. So thanks for joining me, guys. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.